we talk about the Holy Spirit, particularly the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. I've had much experience with the Holy Spirit, both personally and in times of ministry. And I want you to know that the knowledge of and the experience of the Holy Spirit is absolutely spectacular. And I have some notes here I'd like to share with you about the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. The first instance we have in the book of Acts of what we would call the baptism in or the infilling by the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is found in Acts chapter 2. Let me read a portion of it for you. And when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a rushing uh, violent wind, and all the house they were in was full of it. And they saw tongues like flames of fire coming to rest on every one of them. And they were all full of the Holy Spirit. And they were talking in different languages as the Spirit gave them power. Now they were living in Jerusalem, Jews, God-fearing men from every nation. And when this sound came to their ears, they all came together and were greatly surprised because they heard every man was hearing words of the disciples in this special language. And they were full of wonder and said, are not these men all Galileans? And how is it that every one of us hearing their words in the language of our birth? And um, <clears throat> some said, you know, the drunk, they're full of new wine. But that's the first instance we have where um, in the book of Acts, we have a group of people. I understand it was 120, all at one time filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke in other languages or other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or as the Spirit empowered them. The uh, second instance we have is in uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, where there was a man by the name of Simon, uh, it says, who in the past had a wonder worker, because um, he was Simon the sorcerer. <clears throat> and, um, and when the apostles of Jerusalem sent news that people of Samaria had taken the word of God into their hearts, they sent them Peter and John. Now when Peter and John came there, they made prayer for them that the Holy Spirit might be given them. For up to then, he had not come on any of them, he being the Holy Spirit. Only baptism had been given to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when they... Uh, <clears throat> uh, put their hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Now watch this. When Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the touch of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. What was that? Simon saw something. And probably he heard something. And he wanted to be able to do that which the disciples came. But that's the second instance we have um, of the Holy Spirit being outpoured in the book of Acts. Now the next instance we have is in Acts 10. Uh, I guess this is the third instance. And it's um, the Apostle Peter. And he was sent to the house of Ananias, you remember, and you can read it in Acts chapter. And while he was speaking, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit came on all those who were hearing the word. And the Jews of faith, when they come to, and were full of wonder, because the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles. Why? Because they were talking in tongues, speaking in tongues and giving glory to God. And that's what happens when people truly filled with, baptized in the Holy Spirit, what they are speaking in other tongues is giving glory to God. And um, 
so um, the next instance we had, that was a no. And then uh, we go back to the fourth one, which was in Acts chapter 9. And uh, Paul, dear, it's okay. uh, the doorbell's ringing. Schnookens is going to answer it. But Paul, still burning with desire, we know him as a possible today, uh, trying to get the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and got permission uh, to persecute the disciples. And uh, when he came near to Damascus, suddenly he saw a light from heaven shone round about him. And of course, we know he was uh, knocked off his high horse. And um, he, 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 he fell to the earth and uh, the voice said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you attacking me so cruelly? And the apostle Peter said, well, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are attacking. And then it proceeds with the, the story here. And then, of course, we know with Ananias. And, um, and when Ananias was sent, he said, Lord, I have a counsel. This man, a number of people that... Um, he has done much evil to your saints in Jerusalem. And uh, the Lord said, go without fear, for he is a special vessel unto me to give to the Gentiles and kings the knowledge of my name. And uh, here it is. For I will make clear to him what troubles he will have to undergo for me. And Ananias went to the house, putting his hands on him, Saul, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, whom you saw when you were on your journey, has sent me, so that you may be able to see and be full of the Holy Spirit. And so it seems here that Ananias was instrumental in uh, uh, bringing the message, healing, and uh, it doesn't say he was baptized, uh, but it says he would and be full of the Holy Spirit. Well, <clears throat> that's not bad. Be full of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the fifth instance of uh, the Holy Spirit being given, outpoured, baptism in the Holy Spirit is uh, chapter 19. We start with verse 1, and it came while Paulus was in Corinth, Paul having gone through the higher country, came to Ephesus, where there were certain disciples, believers. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you've believed, or when you believed, or when you had faith? And they said, we have no knowledge of the Holy Spirit. And he said, well, what kind of baptism do you have? And um, uh, they said, the baptism of John, the baptism of repentance. Then Paul <clears throat> said, John gave baptism, which goes with a change of heart, and so on. But uh, there's a, a people that were to have faith in him who were coming after him, that is in Jesus. And hearing this, they had the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had the baptism of John unto repentance. Now they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they had the power of talking in tongues. As this version I'm using says, or the King James Version says, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them others, or acting like the apostles prophets and there were about 12 of these men so here we have five instances in the book of acts of people being baptized in or filled with the holy spirit in uh, most of these instances it specifically says and they began to speak in other tongues in my experience um, I had had a, a mighty uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit 
but I did not speak in tongues at that time. It, uh, I, 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 I thought, wow, this is terrific, and I enjoyed the presence, the power of God. I didn't speak in tongues. And then at another time, I was in the church, just worshiping God. My hands were lifted in the worship to God. And I saw something. With my eyes closed, I saw something uh, like a vast distance away on my left-hand side. And it was coming down. It was like a fluttering of a handkerchief if you were to throw it off the roof of a building and how the handkerchief being open would kind of flutter, not like a parachute, but a fluttering, maybe like a dove. <clears throat> and when this uh, fluttering uh, thing came and touched the top of my head, I began to speak in other tongues. I didn't try. I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, I, I didn't try to make anything up. I just began to speak in other tongues. And um, did I fall down or roll around? No, I didn't. I've fallen other times and rolled around, but that's because uh, I'm a big man. Sometimes I lose my balance. But that had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. But this time, God enabled me to speak in other tongues, and I've been doing so ever since. Is this a Pentecostal experience? My dear brothers and sisters, and I'm married to a Baptist woman, and I have great respect for um, uh, people of other uh, denominations other than Pentecostal. It's not for Pentecostal people. It's for all believers in Jesus Christ and it's very, very scriptural. And um, so I hope this has been a blessing to you. And uh, I hope it uh, confirms in you that if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it gets better. And if you have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I encourage you not to seek to be speaking tongues. No. But I encourage you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, if God uh, chooses, you know, and gives you the gift of tongues, as almost always he does, it may not happen immediately. But watch out, it's coming. God bless you, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. And I would like to say something in the Romanian language. Dragi mei, mari domnezeo avem. El is plin cu dragoste, mila și har. Și prin el avem viața veșnică. Și prin el suntem botezat cu Duhul Sfânt. Slăvit să fie Domnul, Domnul cu voi, God with you, and thanks for listening today. Goodbye.